everybody, this is Jeff with Reverb.com, and I'm here today to talk a little bit about the slide playing of the legendary Ry Cooter. And I say legendary because he's probably considered one of the greatest slide players in the world, just a great musician in general, uh, has a rich history. You know, he's played with Taj Mahal. He's, uh, he's done some work on Rolling Stones records, all kinds of solo material. And, you know, a unique, he's also known for some of his unique guitars, ranging from Strat style to Tele style guitars that a lot of them are referred to as Cooter casters. Because he uh, generally has a, uh, a lap steel in the bridge position, a lap steel pickup, and in the neck he usually has a gold foil pickup. So the videos I was looking at, you know, doing a little more research on him, he always had some different, crazy, and cool looking guitar, and always a great tone. Today's lesson, I'm going to concentrate, I think, mainly on Open G. Um, I don't have a Cooter caster available, but I have. I brought a 77 Fender Telecaster to use and a real a slide that was made out of a real bottleneck. One of the things I like to talk about that I kind of subconsciously picked up on even before I tried learning any of his licks note for note that I got from Ry Cooter is the way he would drag one note into four other notes or five other notes. And what I mean by that is something like... And I'm using a pick. Sometimes I use my fingers. I think Rye played more with his fingers, but either way, it, it'll change your tonality a little bit. But the idea I'm talking about is hitting a single note, and I'm in open G tuning, so I'm in G, just basically following G minor blues patterns. But after I get a good vibrato going on the note, I just move the note up into different intervals. There I went from 11 to 13 to 15, but you don't pick the other notes. You're still, you're, you're taking advantage of the string ringing already. I definitely picked that up from Ry Cooter. And of course, when you're in open tuning, you can let those other strings bleed in. Even if you bump them half the time, it still sounds good. There's a song called uh, Dark End of the Street that Ry Cooter did often and probably still does often. And the cool thing about Dark End of the Street is just, you know, he, he would play it a little different every time from the different recordings I've heard. But it's, he's combining single notes with chordal type ideas in the open tuning and a lot of major sounding stuff. And, and the melody is... So there's a few, a lot of things going on here. Um, one is that single note, that major sounding melody. You know, and you can use that, it doesn't have to be dark end of the street, you can use that in a number of songs. And he's basically, he's playing the G string, kind of pulling off with the slide or sliding off from the second fret and then going to the fourth. And then sliding back to the second, and then off to the open. And ending up at the fifth fret of the D string. So just that lick alone is cool. And then what I was talking about earlier with the note drag, he'll, He'll do that randomly in different versions. I've noticed, I've heard a, you know, different every time a little bit, but he might do a variation. The third time around, he does what I refer to as that string drag again. He ends up on a B note right there before he goes to the C. A D and back to a G chord there. What I'm doing there is I'm dragging the note, 
So I'm, I'm picking it at the second, and then going four, seven, nine, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. But I only picked the first note. And that's not to say you couldn't pick another note. Depends what sound you're going for, but that's what gives it such a smooth feel. Is letting the slide do the work. We've switched it up here and we've grabbed this uh, Guild T-Bird and I'm now in open D tuning and there's a couple licks that I picked up listening to a version of the Statesboro Blues, a recent version I believe, uh, that Ry Cooter was doing with Taj Mahal. There was a couple cool, cool things he did in there and one was... doing is I'm starting my my note here at the seventh fret on the high E five down to five then pulling off on three we're actually starting to slide off five and getting off on the th pulling off on the three and then three on the B string five three zero on the E string so they're playing a groove something like that Another cool lick that I heard Rye doing in, uh, in, in specifically Statesboro blues, but would, would work in a lot of blues is. And basically, I'm just going back and forth from 12 to 10 repeatedly, and then sliding down on all the 12th frets, B string, G string, D string. And just like when we were in open G tuning, now that I'm in open D, that, that string dragging stuff sounds really cool in open D tuning. And you know, if, if you if you watch Rye play, he does a lot of syncopated, you know, things with his thumb at times too. And and you can easily switch from major to minor in this tuning. But the, what I was thinking of was something along the lines of And here I'm just, you know, I'm on high E string, kind of using my thumb to play the low string a little bit and doing that string drag two, four, seven, nine, twelve. You might even be able to get that going in a and you know you could easily change that to minor just by moving up a half step and give it a whole different sound. There's a couple ideas that were inspired um, by Ry Cooter. Again, you know, uh, Check out some of his recordings. A lot of great videos on YouTube, old and recent. I mean, he's still a great player. He gets a variety of, of awesome guitar tones. He's played with everybody there is, <laughs> just about. So definitely, if you're not aware of Ry Cooter and you're into slide playing, you, you need to get aware of him you know, immediately because he's probably one of the greatest. Mm -hmm. 